Manga Wido. I'm Yosuke Kubo, high school student. School's fun. I have a decent amount of friends, and every day's fulfilling. But there's this one guy who annoys me. Masato Tojo. Unfortunately, I've known him since junior high, and as far as I know, he's always been self-important and condescending. Tojo's dad is a member of the local congress, but it's as if he believes that's his own status. Tojo, it's your turn to clean up today. Why are you going home? Shut up! Champ's being released today! So what? You could still clean up and get home with time to read it. I have things to do, unlike you commoners. Besides, if I cleaned up, I'd get dirty. You go home like this every time. It's not fair. Shut your mouth! Cleaning up is for you lower class people. I can't do that. I'll tell the teacher. You can tell him if you want. I'll just use my dad's influence to make him disappear. With the... <laughs> Masato went home. He always does this. If you ever say anything to him, my dad will make it disappear. My dad's important. He just brings up his politician dad. The next day, Masato was just as arrogant, making the girls do all the work. That's heavy, right? I'll help. Yosuke, thank you. The teacher told me and Masato to carry them, but he said I can't do this kind of grunt work and went off somewhere. Again? That guy's got serious personality problems. Of course I had talked to the teachers about Masato's despotism, but they were all reluctant to get involved, and none of them gave him a proper warning. Apparently, his dad was good friends with the school principal. There was a teacher who warned him once, but he ended up being mysteriously transferred away at an unusual time. I wonder if it might have had something to do with his dad. I don't know if it was due to that, but afterwards, Masato walked around as if he owned the place, forcing jobs he didn't want to do on others and flunking classes to his heart's content. And as if that wasn't bad enough, he even began trying to manipulate classmates to do his bidding. You! You got a better math grade than me again, didn't you? Um, well, yeah, I guess. You need to learn to take a hint and back off. How can I be number one with you here? B -b -b but even if you say that... My dad's important. Having him talk to the teacher and getting your grades reduced would be a very simple thing to do, you know. Uh, but... Do what I say unless you want to be in trouble. If you get a better grade than me on the next test, you won't get away with it. There was no way I could let it go, so I told my tutor everything, but... You know his father's a powerful man, right? I know, but he can't get away with threatening people like that. I understand how you feel, but don't go rocking the boat. You don't want to draw his attention to you, do you? He was completely reluctant, and it didn't solve anything. If I couldn't rely on adults, I had no choice but to say something myself. Hey, Masato! Stop using your dad's authority as a shield to act all high and mighty. Everyone's sick of it! Oh, what's this? Are you giving me your opinion? Your dad's position is your dad's position. It has nothing to do with you, does it? Oh? So that's how you're going to speak to me, hmm? Come to think of it, your dad's a civil servant, isn't he? Yeah, so what? That makes him one of my dad's underlings! Don't get carried away! I dare you to say one more thing to me! I'll tell my dad to see to it that yours is fired! Just because his dad's a member of the local assembly doesn't mean he has the authority to do that. But then, the teacher who gave Masato a warning did end up being transferred at an unusual time. On the off chance he did something, I'd hate for it to end up causing my dad trouble. After that, I didn't say anything else to Masato, and kept as much distance from him as possible. Fortunately, I heard the classmate Masato told not to get higher grades than him, ended up getting a recommendation for a good university, and no longer had to be afraid. I thought it was safer just to keep my mouth shut instead of causing trouble, and having it end up affect my career path. From then on, every time Masato looked at me... Hey, commoner's son! Do what your future boss says! He made fun of me, but I kept my head down, and continued to live my life quietly.
trying not to cause any trouble. <laughs> Masato makes me so mad! Yeah, but they do say you should let sleeping dogs... How did it go again? You're right, but damn it. I hope he gets his comeuppance one day. I'm with you. I wish something would happen that would make him shut his mouth. It happened a few days after I had that conversation with my friend. An incident occurred that made Masato shut his mouth. But before that happened, I shouted, Ow! Ah, that hurts! Damn it! Huh? Masato? I thought someone had pushed me from behind on my way home from school. But when I looked, there was Masato's bike! Don't get in my way! You walk like an old woman! Screw this guy! Ow! Get back here! Give it a rest! I don't have time to be associating with peasants like you! I said come back! I stood up and shouted at him, but I must have hit my head when I fell over, because I collapsed right there on the spot. A passerby found me and called me an ambulance, and I spent the day in hospital while they ran some tests. Luckily, my head was okay, but I did fracture one of my fingers. Hey, Masato! I'm gonna be sending you my medical bills, so prepare yourself! I showed him my bandaged hand. I was convinced he'd start panicking. You probably put that bandage on yourself! I won't be fooled by your acting! Medical bills! Pathetic! You're so poor and desperate for money, you'll do anything! Get lost! After laughing with a... <laughs> to my astonishment, he barged into me! Oh! Yeah, yeah, give the acting a break! <laughs> I can't take this anymore! I gathered the evidence and my medical certificate, and went with my dad to Masato's house. We have all the proof here. So after this, we'll be reporting the incident at the police station. Masato must have been panicking as my dad said that over the intercom. Please, come in, said the servant who came to the door and led us inside. Masato and his scowling father sat in the living room. This is the footage of your son crashing into my boy in front of the bookstore. I'm good friends with the bookstore owner, and he showed me the CCTV footage immediately. Here's the medical certificate. Ah, I see, I see. Upon seeing the evidence, Masato's dad stroked his chin, deep in thought. Daddy! There's no need for us to get involved with these peasants! This is nothing but a forgery! Let's kick them out! Is he seriously still saying that, even now? I was seething with rage. But a moment later, I felt like an immense weight had been lifted from my shoulders. SHUT YOUR MOUTH! Are you seriously still saying that despite all this evidence? Apologize! Apologize to these people at once! What? Masato, having his head pushed down, prostrated himself on the floor before us. Since he was always acting so self-important, I guess I just assumed his dad would be the same. Maybe he was a decent person after all. My dad and I looked at each other in amazement, but just a few moments later, our perceptions changed. Now that my son has apologized, I hope we can all settle this amicably. Hey, you! With a bow, the servant said, Yes, sir, and returned with a thick envelope. Do we have an agreement? Money? This much? You're asking us to settle out of court? I'm pleased you're a man of keen understanding. If it's not enough, I can have him bring you another one. No thanks. You forced your son to get down on his knees and apologize, but he doesn't seem remorseful in the slightest. My boy also told me how awfully he treats people at school. My dad pushed the envelope back. I stood by his side and nodded my head in agreement with such enthusiasm, it probably looked like it was about to fall off. We're going to report the crime and have him pay for what he's done in the proper fashion. I came here today to tell you that. Well then said my dad as he began to stand up. The calm expression on Masato's dad's face had suddenly disappeared. His face was bright red as he exploded in anger. This is your attitude when I tried to reason with you? This is why there's no hope for the ignorant masses! I knew it. The apology just now was just an act, wasn't it? I have an election soon! As a grown man, you should know that! How much? How much do you want? Name a price and it's yours! $50,000? $100,000? I was speechless, 
completely astonished by the enormous figures I was hearing. My dad stood in front of me as if to protect me, and... No thanks. Is what he said, bluntly. If you and your son would have apologized sincerely, we might have reconsidered our course of action. But with your attitude, you won't get away with this. Isn't that right, Yosuke? Right! You won't get away with it! Let me make this clear! I have friends in the police! Do you really think that I can't make a tiny incident like this disappear? Oh really? Is that so? I forgot to tell you this, but I've been recording our entire conversation since we arrived today. Oh yeah? And? Are you going to take it to the police or something? Even if you did, my- My brother's a journalist at the Weekly Wido magazine. When my dad said that, Masato's dad's face turned from angry to pale white. Wait a sec, that's bad. That's really bad. I'm terribly sorry, but as well as the recording, my phone's also been on an active phone call. Hey, did you hear that? You got everything? That's good news. Well then, we'll be continuing this conversation later on through our lawyers. Goodbye. Wait, no! Please wait! Hey, Masato, get on your knees and apologize again! Beg for forgiveness! Ah, I'm sorry! Please forgive me! Hey, Yosuke, I said wait! Not my problem. This is the price you pay for everything you've done. You and your dad should think about your behavior. Afterwards, my dad said, please take care of the rest. To his brother, Kota, as he handed over the voice recorder and other evidence. Weekly magazine publishers really do work fast. Next week's edition contained an article headlined, Congressman and Son Attempt to Cover Up Incident with Bribe. Masato's name wasn't published with him since he was still a high school student. However, it did include a blurred out picture of him crashing into me. I don't know if that's why, but he stopped showing up at school. My dad and I went to the police station together and reported the incident. What, with it being in the magazine? The police probably weren't able to sweep it under the rug. Masato was then questioned and ultimately fined for causing injury by negligence. There were crowds of reporters outside Masato's house every day, and it seems he and his father were no longer able to show their faces outside. His social media was filled with anguish-filled posts like, I'm sick of this! And, My life is over! But not a single one of his classmates had any sympathy for him. Ultimately, Masato's dad was no longer able to run in the next election, and apparently after his period of office ended, he was unemployed. According to my reporter uncle, no company was prepared to take on the risk of hiring him. And half a year later, he sold his mansion and moved into a small apartment. Apparently, he and his wife fought endlessly over how to raise their son. I heard his wife left him, and he just lives with his son now. Wow, I see. The son's a neat shut-in now, right? Yeah, but I think he's being classed as a high school graduate for the time being. His social media is filled with nothing but posts like, SOMEONE HELP ME! and I'M IMPORTANT, damn it! One of my reporter friends told me his neighbors are sick of the noise from his violent outbursts at home. It seems like Masato's dad was at a loss for what to do with him due to the violent outbursts. It must be tough, but he has no one but himself to blame. This is what happens when you spoil your kids too much. I successfully made it into my chosen university, and now I'm enjoying my campus life. My fractured finger healed perfectly too. I hope I can live peacefully without meeting anyone else like Masato from now on. My name is Fumika. I live in a condominium complex with my husband and child. I've lived here 10 years. I have a lot of friends who are mothers themselves. Everyone is really nice, and we get along with everyone. But last year, Kyoda and her family moved into the complex. Kyoda is a very intense lady. Kyoda's husband worked at a top company, and it seems like they're wealthy. She's always trying to get a one-up on us when we talk. Oh, everyone's here. Are you talking about the specials at the supermarket? <laughs> Let me in on it. I've been to several, but they don't have a lot of what I need. Is that so? The Manwa Super by the station has a good selection, doesn't it? Yes, the one behind the school is also good. Oh, they're no good. All their stuff is cheap. They have to carry good things like wide super. Anything less, I'm not satisfied with. Ugh, really. 
it's too bad they don't have a wide super in the area. Oh, I know. I'm having such a hard time with it. I wasn't born with the taste of someone poor eating cheap food. <laughs> oh my god. Who does she think she is? Every time Kyoto saw us, she would come over and be as she is and tell us how much better she was than us. Good morning! It's a beautiful day today. Uh, good morning. Yes, it is nice today. It's so nice that the laundry on the line can dry so fast. Uh, Kyoto, can you move, please? I can't get my bicycle out. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, hey, uh, don't you think I look different today? Uh, oh, do you have a new brooch? Aha, uh -huh, you noticed. I said I didn't need it, but my husband said it looked so good on me that he had to buy it. <laughs> it's a limited boochie brooch. That's great. Please move. Hey, what are you doing? I wanted you to take a closer look at it. We're in a hurry. I didn't have any interest anyway, so I pedaled my bike as fast as I could. Kyoto was pouting back at the complex alone. But Kyoto didn't learn anything from that. This year, we were only able to vacation overseas five times. <laughs> what about you all? How many times did you go? Only once? Ah, oh, that's too bad. Kids' education costs so much. I can only afford 100,000 yen per month or my husband gets mad. What about you all? How much do you spend? What? Only 30,000 yen? Really? You can't raise a smart kid on that. It was unbearable. Day after day, the same thing. Just as you'd expect with a child of a parent like that, the child was just like the parent. So you've never been to Hawaii? Wow, what a waste. That's sad that you have to be the child of a poor family. He tried to get a one-up on a classmate and left him crying. And then, to a kid whose family wasn't rich, he said, Hey! You're always wearing the same clothes. It must be hard being so poor that your parents can't buy you clothes. <laughs> when this happened, it caused such a problem that the parents were called to a meeting to talk. Apparently, the girl he said it to was so shocked that she had to spend time in the nurse's office. You'd think that in such an event, even Kyoto would get angry at her kid. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my son is just honest and says the truth. Do you know how much he hurt the girl's feelings? Yes, I know. I'll tell him to be nicer to the poor kids. I can't believe you don't understand. Tja, really, I can't believe it. What? I said I would talk to him about it. What's wrong with that? But don't you think the poor kid is at fault as well? I mean, if they don't want to be teased, there has to be something they can do. Like buy clothes from the recycle shop or something. <gasps> I've got it! If they can't afford to buy any clothes, I can give them some of ours. That way, the teacher won't get mad at my kid anymore. <laughs> it didn't matter how much we explained it. Kyoto couldn't understand it, and the meeting ended without any resolution. We realized that anything we did wouldn't matter, so we tried not to associate with her anymore. But since we lived in the same complex, there were times we ran into each other. One day, we were discussing about having a party in the commons room of our complex. I heard that! <gasps> You're going to have a party? I want to go! Count me in! Kyoto pushed her way in. We didn't want to invite her, but we felt like we shouldn't leave any kid out. So we decided that we would invite her and her kid to the party. We agreed that we would take the lead at the party and do what we could to keep Kyoto from talking. It was the day of the party. The strategy went well and there was no problem at the party. The kids were playing together and it looked like everything was going well. Just when there was a lull in the fun, it was then that Kyoto started to talk about how great she was. Oh, I didn't think we were supposed to bring food we had prepared. I went all out and ordered for some. I'm so embarrassed. I guess I should have told you. That's okay, it was my mistake. <sighs> when 
when my husband has parties for work, he always orders out at a well-established caterer. You know, like sweets from that famous hotel. But the place I ordered from was more like, you know, kind of normal. Without taking a breath, she talked and talked, bragging about how much better she is than us. Everyone was so astonished, they just listened to her. She looked really satisfied that she was able to talk so much. But Kyoto was in a good mood because she was drinking alcohol while she was talking. When we were talking about our home payments, she joined us. <sighs> we didn't get our full bonus this time, so things are a little tight. Us too. It's getting really tight these days. Oh, are you worried about your husband's salary? Me too! Uh-huh. Kyoto too? How can you say that? You've always got a lot of name brand things, right? Yes, I have them. But my husband's salary has gone down and I'm having a hard time. Oh yeah, I just went and got my bank statement. She reached into her name brand bag and pulled out her bank statement. She then started waving it in front of us, trying to get us to look at it. See? It's not a lot, right? She was having 500,000 yen transferred into her account each month. It seemed like everyone was feeling irritated. You could hear people mumbling. Then, Kyoto said, <sighs> It's not a lot, is it? Ugh, it's really rough. She put on her best sad face. I couldn't take it anymore. I was about to tell her how I felt when this happened. Wow, look at that amount. I've never seen that much. The lady that spoke up with such surprise was until that point just sitting there listening. Her name was Reika. She moved into the complex two years earlier. She was always very polite and nice. Even her kid was nice. She was the perfect mother. It was her that spoke out with such surprise that I and those around me were surprised. Uh, what do you mean by that? It's the first time I've ever seen that amount. How do you get by on so little? Huh? Kyoto was stunned at first, but little by little, her face started turning red. What did you say? We are a high-class family! This is low! Don't make fun of me! Where did her acting go? She was really mad. We had to keep back our laughter. Our family has decided to donate 200,000 yen per month to charity. You wouldn't be able to donate anything with that amount. It's really tight for you, right? Today, you went and ordered food for the party, but that is going to cut into your finances next month, right? Next time, you can just bring something you make so it won't cost as much. Reika had the perfect comeback for her. All of us couldn't help but laugh out loud. <laughs> Kyoto, she got you! <laughs> That's right, you can't get a one-up on us anymore. Reika is so much richer than you are. So you can't brag anymore because Reika is better. <laughs> what? She's rich? Her? She looks normal. How could you say she's rich? I think she's the daughter of a nobleman, or maybe a samurai. Yes, that's right. You say she looks normal, but those clothes she's wearing are the original design of a famous brand. Isn't that right, Reika? Yes. I asked and got it from my sister's personal stylist. He made it for me. I wanted something I could wear while raising kids, and it had to be made from natural materials. So he made me this. P uh, per personal stylist? Reika's sister is Suzuka. She does a lot of modeling and she works in a company. She's amazing. She's been featured in those brand magazines you like. Uh, no way. She's not that Suzuka who was interviewed in the magazine, is she? Ah, yes. That's my sister. You've seen the article? On my sister's behalf, let me thank you for buying it. As Reika smiled at her, Kyoto started to turn blue as she recalled something. You can't be the sister that Suzuka mentioned in the interview, right? The one she's so proud of and the one who married that real estate mogul? Uh, yes, that's me. No way! I looked it up on SNS. The girl that's connected to Suzuka never shows her face. That was you? Your husband is a hundred million plus yen real estate mogul? Wow, how'd you find that out? Really? Do all rich people do that? She must have a lot of time on her hands. Once Kyoto realized that she couldn't beat Reika, she stumbled off, mumbling under her breath. 
I'm just going to say that I'm richer than all of you. This doesn't mean you've won. That was what she said to us as to make herself look better than us. Since none of us were trying to beat Kyoto, we didn't care if she won or lost. What we were surprised with was Reika's look. I'm sorry. Her attitude wasn't very nice. That's why I said those things to her. Did I say too much? Ah, I thought she was being honest, but she wasn't. She looked concerned. I'm sorry I made a mess of the situation. She was apologizing. There's no need to apologize. That really helped us all. Thank you. After we told her we appreciated what she had done, the party continued and everyone had a great time. After that, whenever Reika was there, Kyoda would run off suddenly, and the time she tried to get a one-up on us were few. Two months later, at school, her son was causing so much trouble, the teacher had enough and called her husband in for a meeting. Because of that, it became clear that Kyoda was always so busy trying to buy name-brand goods off the internet that she never spent any time raising her kid. Apparently, her husband wanted a divorce. Ugh, it's all your fault! You need to take responsibility for it! In the end, a month later, Kyoda had to move to her in-law's place and was monitored by her mother-in-law. When she left, she was crying enough to turn her makeup into mud. She looked like a zombie. And that is how our little group got our peace back. I just want to be close to the group that I'm in. My name is Satoshi Sudo. I'm an ordinary office worker. My father passed away three years ago. I've been living with my mother since then, in this 30-year-old house. Don't worry about me. Just find a nice girl. You should get married and move out of here. Oh, Mom. Stop worrying about stuff like that. My mother hasn't been doing great since my father passed away. She keeps getting sick. I could never abandon my mother. So I plan on staying here with her for a while. Okay, I'm off. Yep, see you later. Marone, take care of mom while I'm gone. What? I love this dog. She's another reason I'm staying here. I'm not ready to get married anyways, and I'm enjoying working at the moment. I'm satisfied with where I am now. My life may seem boring and ordinary, but I loved it. However, it didn't stay boring for long. Huh? What the heck? That day, when I got home, the garden was a mess! Was the neighbor's kid. He came in and started kicking a soccer ball. S soccer Why here? Did he do anything to you? No, but when I tried to tell him to stop, he glared at me and told me to shut up. I was terrified. My mother told me the boy came in from the crack in the wall. That weekend, I went to the home improvement store to buy some materials to fix the wall. I've never met the boy before, and I'm hoping I'll never have to see him as long as I can keep him out. However, the boy surprised me. I never expected him to go that far. The doorbell rang on Sunday morning, so I went to answer the door. A boy about 10 or 11 was standing outside with a woman, probably his mother. Why did you fix the wall? What? I can't get in anymore! Break the wall again! So... You're the kid that broke into our yard? My mother, who was watching from the living room, was shivering from fear as she nodded at me. You are way out of line here! This is private property! He's not allowed to just come in here to play. We won't be breaking the wall just so he can have a playground. You can't be serious. This is a perfect place for my child to play. What do you mean? I can watch over him from our balcony so I can see what he's doing anytime I want. If he can't come in through the wall, let him in through your front door. No, ma'am. That's not the problem here. Apparently, the child and the mother recently moved into the condominium built next to our house. I could see the balconies all facing towards our house. That means she could look out into our yard any time. Your mother, she's here alone every day, right? Yes, she is. Then it'll benefit both of us. I'll let her watch my precious boy play in her yard. Are all parents these days as crazy as she is? I've heard stories of these cuckoo parents, but this is the first time meeting one. 
I can't seem to get through to her. Um, well, I don't quite understand what you're trying to say here. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you, since my child is cute, your mother will benefit from watching a young child play nearby. Thanks, but no thanks. My mother doesn't feel comfortable with strangers coming into our property. Anyways, don't ever come into our yard ever again. I realized the mother would never understand what I was saying, so I pushed them out of the gate. The mother and the child stood there. You're so selfish! You should be nicer to children! And yelled at me. Maybe I should call the police! But left when I said that. <sighs> I hate how they'll be living near us. I don't want psychos like them in the neighborhood. It's scary. I have a feeling they'll be back. I should let his school know about this. I called the elementary school in the area just in case and told them about what happened. I also asked them to tell the family to never bother us again. I thought that getting scolded by the teacher would prevent him from trespassing again. However... I can't believe you called the school! They lectured me at the parent-teacher conference! The mother of the child came banging on the door, acting like she was the victim. She was screaming so loud, I ignored her, so I didn't have to deal with her. But then... You wouldn't believe the things she started doing. She would throw dog poop into our property, and she tried harassing us by throwing all of her trash into our yard. I purchased a security camera to record proof of her heinous actions. She came every day doing all kinds of stuff. I had enough proof almost immediately. Now all I have to do is bring the video to the police. Unluckily, some issues at work kept me from coming home early enough to go talk to the police for the next few days. Mom, if she comes back again, you need to call the police. This has all the data in it, pictures and videos of everything. Okay, Satoshi. Don't work yourself too hard. I won't. Marone, take care of Mom, okay? Bark at the kid if he comes to bother us again. I was thankful Marone was there for my mom. I smiled at her and left for work. However, that evening, I received a shocking phone call from my mother. Satoshi, we need help. Mom, what's wrong? Marone's doghouse, it's on fire. What? I explained everything to my boss and he let me go home to check up on things. I rushed home to find the smoking, black remains of what used to be Marone's doghouse. Marone? Is Marone okay? <laughs> oh, Marone, thank God. She wasn't hurt, was she? My mother explained to me that she and Marone were out taking a walk when the fire started. They were both unhurt. Some of the neighbors noticed the smoke and took care of the fire. I'm just relieved that the house didn't catch on fire. Okay, we should go thank them later on. Wow, but seriously, who would do something like this? The boy's mother came to mind, but I needed to check first. I knew it! The boy and the mother were responsible for the fire. The camera caught footage of the boy running around with fireworks, and his mother was laughing as she watched him run around the yard. They've gone too far! I went to the condominium to talk to them. I explained the situation to the building manager and asked if he could take me to their room. The manager knew the mother well. She was giving him a headache as well. Oh, them. He frowned. However, he told me he couldn't let me in the building for security matters. They left the building a while ago. You can wait for them here if you want. I waited for them to come back and confronted them. How could you put the doghouse on fire and just leave? Huh? What fire? We didn't do anything. We have footage of you and your boy running around with fireworks in our yard. I need you to come with me. I'll show you what you've done and I'm calling the police. I was yelling at the top of my lungs. Some of the residents came out to see what the commotion was about. I guess she didn't like being the center of attention. She agreed to come along, and we left her building. 
You two! Come here! I made sure the boy came along to show him the damage he'd done. Once I showed them the burnt doghouse, I thought they would at least apologize. Dude, it's not that bad. I agree. I can't believe you're making such a huge deal out of this. This is why I hate stingy people. They were both acting as if it was nothing! The mother even laughed scornfully! How can you say that?! Do you realize what would have happened if Maron was in the doghouse?! Nobody died and the fire's out. Exactly! We gave you the opportunity to get a new doghouse for your filthy dog. We don't owe you anything. You should thank us. You're crazy! Plus, my husband is a government official. He'll have no problem covering up such a small problem. That's right. My dad is a powerful guy. He's so much better than an ordinary commoner like you. Neither of them had any morals. I felt like punching them in the face for what they were saying. It was taking me everything to prevent that from happening. Reiko! Shintaro! I thought I heard your voices. What's happening here? A man with glasses started talking to us. He was looking in over the wall built around my house. Daddy! The kid called the man. I realized he was the woman's husband and the father of the kid. I invited him into the yard and explained everything that was happening. I wasn't expecting him to have any common sense. He was probably going to back them up, saying none of this was their fault. Please forgive us for all the trouble we've caused. He bowed deeply, and his apology seemed to come from his heart. What? Why? Why are you apologizing to this poor loser? That's right, Daddy. You're so much better than him. You shouldn't apologize to him. You're cooler than that. Shut up! What you've done is unforgivable! How do you not realize that? Apologize to this man, now! Put your heads on the ground and say sorry! What? The father of the boy told me how he lost his dog to a fire that started at his neighbor's house. After that, I showed the father everything I had prepared to take to the police. By the end of the footage, the man was as pale as a ghost. He bowed down so deeply, I thought he was going to touch the ground with his head. I am so sorry for everything you had to go through. The fire the walls, just everything. I will pay for everything my family damaged. The doghouse, the garden. Please, let me know if there's anything else. Oh, come on. There's no need to apologize. He's just a stingy man who kicked out our precious child. He's not stingy. You're the one who broke the law. Trespassing and damaging property while at it is a crime. You are the wife of a government official. How can you be so reckless? I never want to see your face again! I can't live with you anymore! I just can't! What? This is all my fault. I neglected my family because of my work. I was never home. No, it's not... your fault? I'm going to change jobs. That way I can focus on raising my son right. It's always been on my mind, and I've made my decision. I promise, my family will never cause any sort of trouble for you again. The husband seemed so proper. Why did he marry such a psycho? There was a lot to discuss, but I felt so bad for the husband apologizing for what his family did. It's okay. How about we set up another date to talk about what we'll do? So I suggested we all go home for now. I was relieved to see that the father had proper morals. I was starting to feel like everything was going to be fine, but it didn't end there. The mother suddenly grabbed the husband by his collar and... You're changing jobs? You're not going to be a government official anymore? You can't do that! How am I going to pay my debts? She didn't even see me anymore. She lashed out at her husband. Wait, did she say debts? She said my debts, didn't she? The mother realized what she just said, and she covered her mouth, as if that fixes anything. What? Debts. Reiko. It's not that bad. Um, it's just that I needed some money, you know? Hey, don't be angry. Honey, I love you. I found out later that the mother was a shopping and gambling addict. She used up all the money in the house, and she was borrowing money from her relatives. We're divorced now. 
She's at her relative's place working day and night to pay back all the money she borrowed from them. They live on an island, so she won't bother you ever again. I'm at a new job now. I love coming home early to see this guy every day. I'll make sure to teach him well. My parents are helping out a lot. Shintaro? Isn't there something you need to say? I'm sorry for doing all those bad things. I won't do them ever again. I felt bad watching them walk away. The father looked so tired. But I knew the kid was better off living with the father. He would never turn out to be a proper person if the mother raised him. Come here, Maron. We've received the money. Let's go buy you something good to eat. Mom, let's go shopping. We can go buy some new flowers for the garden. Okay, I was thinking of hibiscuses, since it's warm now. Great! Let's get going then! The crazy mother and child were gone, and our lives were finally peaceful again. The house we live in may be old, but it's filled with memories. It holds a big place in our hearts. I would like to live here as long as possible. I hope my dad in heaven helps us protect our house from crazy neighbors from now on. Hey, Yuto! Over here! Sorry I'm late! My name's Yuto. I'm just your average salary man. Glad you could make it! Is that everyone? This is the only time I'm coming with this many people here. It's not like I want to be here myself. But I couldn't refuse when Senpai said he invited some nice girls especially. Are you guys having a secret chat? Suspicious. No, we were just saying how nervous we are because of the girls are so beautiful. <laughs> were you really? Are these two used to this? Today, my friend Kensuke from back in college asked me for the favor of a lifetime. So here I am participating in a blind dating party. The event's kicking off with four guys and four girls, making eight of us in total. Kensuke's senpai at work, Kanda, was the one who arranged it. Apparently, he was quite the womanizer, and he was always making Kensuke come along to dating events. Seems like when your boss is a nuisance, your private life gets harder, too. Have a hand towel. Uh, thanks. Not at all. Here's the salad. Cute and excellent taste! The girls took the initiative as they divided the food and complimented each other on their appearances. Their ulterior motives were immediately plain to see and I was already getting fed up. Well then, shall we kick things off with some self-introductions? Ooh, yes, yes, me first. I'm Akane, I'm a Photostar grammar, and my job is to go adventuring around the world. Oh, and my daddy's the CEO of a major candy manufacturing company. Golly gosh, a CEO's daughter? <laughs> you bet in like my granddad. <laughs> okay, okay. Me? My name's Sayako. I'm a Photostar grammar too, just like Akane. Oh, and by the way, my daddy's the CEO of a jewelry company. Holy moly! You're both Photostar grammars? Now that's hip! After that, both of their self-introductions, without fail, included the sentence, My daddy's the CEO of so-and-so. That's right, apparently both girls were the daughters of the CEOs of major companies. Is this what Kensuke meant earlier when he mentioned some nice girls? Time for the self-introductions from the boys camp now. Let's hear them. Okay, I'll go. I'm Kanda, the host of tonight's blind dating event. I'm a surgeon. Wow, that's super cool. A surgeon? Amazing. Predictably, as soon as Kanda mentioned his occupation, the girls went wild. The surgeon's salary is high even for a medical professional. A second look at his appearance revealed a vibrant, brand name suit and a shiny, expensive-looking watch. Guess this is what you'd expect from a surgeon. Then came an entrepreneur. And after Kensuke and the surgeon finished their self-introductions in order, it was finally my turn. Hey, uh, I'm here tonight because my friend Kensuke invited me. It seemed like there were some excessively high expectations placed on me due to the order things had gone down. The girls were looking at me with a glimmer in their eyes pair of photostagrammers right in front of me, in particular, were gazing at me as if to appraise my value. My job is... I just work in IT. Wow, you're the president of an IT company? No, it's nothing like that. I'm just a regular employee. As soon as I said the words regular employee, 
there was an obvious change in the atmosphere. <sighs> so, you're an office worker? Hey, what's that watch you're wearing? Is it nice? No, it's just a cheap one I bought for work. Huh. And your suit? Is it unbranded? Well, yeah, it is. I've been invited to this event out of the blue just earlier today. And I didn't have any time to prepare in advance, so I was wearing my regular clothes. But this is just how things are for a salary man. Hey, hey so that about wraps things up for the self-introductions. Cheers, everyone! In the midst of the uncomfortable atmosphere, Conda raised a toast to bring things back on track. The speed dating event continued while everyone changed sheets occasionally. About halfway through, we somehow or other ended up divided into two groups, and things calmed down a little. Conda and the entrepreneur carried on their respective conversations and seemed to be having fun. Me, Kensuke, and the two photostagrammer girls had been left out and were all sat together. As for the girls, they both had a look of complete disappointment on their faces. Compared to the table next to us, to be honest, the atmosphere was pretty awkward. She's just taking absurd amounts of photos in silence. We're gonna head to the toilets. Psst, come with me. Sure. Gah, this is too awkward. Yeah. Their attitudes are completely different to when we started. Listen, speaking frankly, I don't think either of us really intended to get a girlfriend today. But if things are too awkward, Kanda will probably say something to us afterwards. So even if it's just for show, we have to try and liven things up a bit. You help me? Uh, okay. I'll do my best. Sorry for dragging into this. We prepared ourselves and sat back down at the table where our grumpy counterparts were waiting for us. Sorry we kept you. Yeah, welcome back. Excuse me, can I have another wine, please? When we got back to our seats, the two of them had been drinking pretty heavily. A row of empty glasses were lined up on the table. So, what kind of pictures do you guys upload to Photostar? Hmm? Me and Akane are both in the travel field. Ah, you mean like going abroad? Yeah, that sort of thing. You must have gone to all sorts of different places then. Well, the people doing it seriously do. We're half hobbyists, so we're not as committed as them. That's right. We always get our pocket money from our daddies anyway. It's not like we're doing Photostar because we need the money or anything. I see. I wonder how many thousands or tens of thousands of dollars the daughters of a CEO means when she says pocket money. In any case, with the swift introduction of the word daddy into the conversation, I can feel the difference in social standing between our families. It is fun going abroad, though. Oh, I just love it. Right? Japan's just so boring. You just can't live without getting some steam off abroad every now and then. That's so true. Whoa! I guess that's what you'd expect from the daughters of CEOs. <laughs> I don't know if it was because they had a lot to drink, but the girls were getting louder and louder as they got more excited. So, which countries have you two been to recently? I've been stuck in a rut lately, so I could use some inspiration. Well, it's not really recent, but I did go to Guam a few years ago. I think that's about it. No way! You serious? A few years ago? He's gotta be joking. Wait, you can't afford to go abroad, can you? <laughs> Girls were pointing and laughing at me. Looking on, Kensuke seemed even angrier than I was. Is that how you speak to people? That's just how it is for people like me and him who work normal jobs. You don't always have time to travel when you're busy with work as we are. Really? Oh, well, aren't you good little employees? <laughs> Corporate slaves. <laughs> you listen to me. Now, now. I couldn't tell if the girls had malicious intentions or not, but they continued chatting in high spirits, completely indifferent to the seething Kensuke. Japanese people seriously love working, huh? Daddy arranged me an introduction for a temporary job at a smaller company so I could get some work experience. But I quit after two days. Ugh, nuh uh. I'm just not cut out for that life. I bet it was nothing but work from morning till night, right? You'd have to be a moron to do that kind of thing for less than 100,000k a year. Huh! They were being a little unpleasant, but it beat them sulking, so I just decided to half heartedly nod along as they spoke. At some point, the conversation returned back to Photostar and traveling abroad. Guess what? My post went viral. I'm getting so many comments. Ooh, this water cottage is so pretty. I know, right? 
but have you seen how many poor people are commenting on it? <laughs> I laugh so hard reading them. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> One of them said, I want to save up my money so I can go on an amazing holiday like this. <laughs> What kind of penniless slum dweller can even afford to go on a little holiday? It's so pathetic. <laughs> Nearly all of our followers are poverty-ridden scum, huh? <laughs> they probably don't even have enough money or time, so all they can do is grit their teeth and look at the pictures. <laughs> oh, it's just too hilarious. <laughs> they clapped their hands and laughed hysterically. Kensuke had gotten tired of their condescending remarks a while ago, but now, even I, who had been tolerating them until now, ran out of patience when they started making fun of their followers. Despite both of you being photostagrammers, don't you think your followers are important? Duh, of course follower numbers are important. As a photostagrammer, the number of followers and likes you have is your value. They're kind of like, grades? What do we care if most of them are poor scum? A like is a like. Don't you think your fans would be shocked if they heard you referring to them as poor scum like this? Huh? Shocked? Who cares what they think? I mean, of course, we don't want to get internet pitchfork mobbed, but as long as we take nice pictures and get likes, what's the problem? Right? It appeared that it was time for these two girls, who knew nothing of the world, to be taught a lesson. So, that's what you think while doing your jobs, is it? I see. Hey, what's with you all of a sudden? Ugh, no way. Hearing the words poor scum didn't upset you, did it? <laughs> we can't help it. It's the truth. Damn it! I'm just gonna tell him. You know what company he works for? <laughs> Probably some easily small fry company at best, right? Not that I care. You know Photostar? The site you wouldn't stop talking about just now? Well, he works for the company that runs it. He's on the inside. <laughs> We kept it a quiet on purpose because you said you were photosagrammers at the beginning. Well, so what? He's probably just some insignificant low-grade employee. <laughs> Don't be stupid. He's really good at his job. Can someone on over 100k a year really be referred to as poor scum like you were saying just now? Huh? I have no obligation to tell you anything about my job. But one word from me could easily make one or two run-of-the-mill cliched accounts like yours vanish into obscurity. Uh, you're joking, right? They weren't being so cocky anymore. It might not trouble them financially, being the daughters of CEOs, but Photostar was still important to them. I'm sorry. I won't say poor scum anymore. I'll be careful about what I say. Please, don't make our accounts disappear, please! Oh, yeah. I'll have to have a word with your sponsors, too. I said what I said just now too lightly. This could ruin the image of some important business partners. I'm sorry, please! Anything but that! I'll be careful from now on! I don't care whether you call me poor scum or about anything you say to me, but badmouthing your followers who are important and who like pictures of your experiences because they admire you makes you a failure as a professional photostagrammer. I'm gonna think about how to deal with you. I suggest you think about your behavior. We're so sorry. Kanda, noticing the unusual atmosphere at our table, quickly brought the event to an end. Sorry. Will Kanda say something to you tomorrow? It's fine. Don't worry. He'll understand when I explain what happened. Besides, they were really annoying me, so I'm pleased you said something. Really? Whew. I said I'd think about how to deal with them, but of course that was a lie. There's no way I could go investigating people based on my personal affairs. I just wanted to make them sweat a little. If this makes them think about their behavior even a little, I'll be happy. But that's not how things turned out. The next day, their accounts went up in flames at the hands of an internet pitchfork mob. The cause? A single video. The video, titled Influencer Calls Followers Poor Scum, which had been recorded by a customer at the restaurant, went viral in the blink of an eye. Popular Photostar Grammar makes series of problematic statements. I used to like her. What a shock. The two, upon investigation, appear to be the daughters of the CEOs of major companies. It's over for those fools. <laughs> the internet exploded in a storm of fierce criticism. Before long, 
both of their accounts disappeared. Apparently, they were doxxed, with online sleuths exposing their real names and addresses, and they even started getting harassed at home. Of course, they were dropped by all the sponsors who had contracts with them, and I heard they're even being sued for damages. Their dad's company's stocks plummeted. I didn't even have to do anything. Things got out of hand on their own, and then were gradually forgotten about. The internet really is terrifying. Well, in their case, it was completely their own fault. But I'm gonna be careful about what I say online from now on. I'm Shinya Ono. I'm 28 years old, and I'm just your average salary man. And this is my co-worker, Ichikawa. We're the same age and entered the company at the same time. But actually, the first time I met him wasn't at work. We went to the same school for a while during the third year of elementary school. That said, my parents moved a lot for work, so we were only classmates for a year. As soon as I entered the company, I realized, hey, that's Ichikawa, because of the distinctive moles on his face. But I intentionally didn't say anything. The reason is personality. Back in school, Ichikawa would indiscriminately try to assert his dominance over everyone and was constantly making fun of and looking down his nose at others. Part of the reason I remembered him was because he left such a bad impression on me. You're such a midget. You're like a preschooler. Shut up. Do your mom and dad feed you properly? Of course. That reminds me. Your parents work at a factory, don't they? I knew it. Are your family so poor they can't afford to feed you properly? <laughs> Pathetic. Whoa, your clothes are such a mess. Huh? Look, there's a hole here! That's just the design. And my god, you stink! Do you even wash? Of course I do! You're being raised by a single mom since your parents divorced, right? Ichikawa, you're horrible! I guess she can't wash your clothes if she can't afford to pay the water bills! Ichikawa made fun of anyone and everyone, which is why I kept my distance from him as much as possible. After a year, I transferred schools again, and that was the last I saw of him. And I had no idea we'd end up meeting again as adults. Luckily, it seemed he didn't remember me, so he treated me like a normal coworker. But it appeared his personality hadn't approved at all since back then. Hey, this is wrong. I'm sorry, I'll fix it immediately. Damn it! This is why uneducated high school graduates can't be trusted to do anything. It's just a small mistake. Surely there's no need to say that. Don't you make mistakes sometimes too? What are you talking about? I'm a Manawa University graduate. Me and a brainless moron like you had nothing in common. Never mind that. Hurry up and revise it. Just like before, he still seems to ascribe value to people based on his own selfish standards and is still extraordinarily rude to those he deems to be lower status than him. If a coworker was struggling to make sales, don't drag everyone else down with you, he'd yell at them. And the quiet otaku guy, you'll probably be a virgin your whole life, huh? Pathetic, was constantly ridiculed and treated like dirt. I did lose my patience and warn him, but listen, Ichikawa, will you please stop saying such horrible things to everyone? It's ruining the atmosphere at work. What? Everything I say is the truth. It's not my fault they're a bunch of lazy halfwits. Everyone works at their own pace, you know. Even still, if you're gonna warn someone, there's a way to go about it. Ha! If they don't like me telling them, then they should work harder so I don't have to. I say these things to motivate them. It's kindness, you hear me? Kindness! Far from self-reflecting, Ichikawa doubled down. It wasn't his fault. I also told the boss how intolerable I found his attitude but he was always on his best behavior when the boss was around and his sales performance was good. So I wasn't taken seriously. Because of Ichikawa, cutting the work makes me depressed. People started saying stuff like that. I thought every day about whether there might be something I could do. Then, damn it, what the heck? That was my best client. One of Ichikawa's clients, S Company, went bankrupt. Upon hearing the news, Ichikawa, the majority of whose sales came from ongoing projects with S Company, turned blue. Apparently, many of his deals were obtained through referrals from S Company, and to lose his intermediary like that must have been quite a shock. After that, his sales performance went down. Damn it! I'm furious! 
This one's no good either. Calm down, Ichikawa. If you lose your head, you might lose the contracts that you can get. There must be other clients who can provide you with projects long term. Shut your mouth! I'm nothing like a mediocre salaryman like you. I'm going to the top. The top! Um, it's not like I don't have any ambitions of my own. I'm not like you! I graduated Manwa University! I'm elite! Before long, I'll be section manager, then department manager, and someday, I'll be at the top! There's no way I can get tripped up at this stage! Yeah, yeah, I get it. Ichikawa might have been determined, but his performance continued to decline rapidly. I don't know if it's because he was panicking, but he even started messing up jobs he'd been doing without problems until then. Not only would he ignore his co-worker's advice, but he began actively taking out his anger on those around him. If a co-worker landed a deal, give it to me, he'd threaten them. And if someone was making more sales than him, I know you cheated, he'd make false accusations. Eventually, even the boss caught wind of his attitude. Ichikawa, this is going too far. And he began receiving warnings regularly. To tell you the truth, I don't think I was the only one in the office who thought, yep, serves you right. I thought it'd be great if he used this as an opportunity to reflect on his behavior and change his ways. But Ichikawa wasn't honest enough to do that. As soon as he realized the boss was aware of him taking out his anger on the others of the company, he began to direct it outside. I told you this was dirty to before, didn't I? Why is it still not clean? Unbelievably, he started going after our building's cleaner. Cut it out, Ichikawa! Stop picking fights with people! Shut your mouth! I'm just giving him some coaching! Hey, you! Cleaning's your job! So how about you start taking it seriously? I'm sorry. Uh, this is the problem with uneducated people like you! If you can't even do what you're told properly, there's no point in you being alive! Hey, that's going too far! I am so sorry about my coworker. It's okay. What are you talking about? I didn't say anything that's not true! Apologizing to the cleaner, I grabbed hold of Ichikawa's arm and pulled him back to our company's floor. Things calmed down that day, but from then onward, Ichikawa continued to pick on the cleaner. It was like he had a new favorite punching bag. When I was there, I could scold him or stop him before he managed to get near the cleaner. But unfortunately, that day, I was running some errands outside the office. By the time I got back, Ichikawa was already pestering him. Hey, you! Aren't you embarrassed doing a job like this? Is this idiot seriously picking a fight with him again? Ugh. How many times have I told him to back off now? What kind of a pathetic excuse for a man works as a cleaner? Say something, you dweeb! Please stop. Huh? What's that? I can't hear you. Speak clearly. Ichikawa, I said leave him alone. Stay out of this. No. To my amazement, Ichikawa kicked a bucket of water, which went flying across the hallway. The place was soaked. What the hell do you think you're doing? Apologize to him now. Be quiet. I'm teaching this board about the harsh realities of life. Clean it up now. You're the one who did it. Clean it up yourself. What? Cleaning's a moron's job. Hurry up and get it done. Someone's got to do something about him. At this rate, he's going to start affecting our company's reputation. Should I take the cleaner along as a witness and tell the boss about everything? Just as I was considering that. Did my son do something wrong? Huh? Whoa! You're that actress! Irina Kikuta! Mom. Mom? Huh? He's Irina's. Yes, this is my son. But what happened here? Huh? He's your son? Has my son been causing trouble? No, far from it. Actually, this guy... Hey! Keep your mouth shut! After grabbing Ichikawa's arm as he made a break for it, I told her absolutely everything. Erna seemed confused at first, but the more she heard about the things her son had been subjected to, the more stern her expression became. I see. Thank you for telling me. Do you work for that company over there? Yeah, no, I, um... Are you aware that my office and your company are business partners? Yes, of course. 
I'm terribly sorry, but we won't be conducting business with you anymore. What? No, you can't! We got a lot of our projects from you! We have no interest in doing business with a company that employs people who would treat someone like dirt purely for being a cleaner. I'll be having a formal discussion about this with my superiors. Now, will you be able to finish cleaning up here on your own, Naoya? Yes, of course. Oh my god. I found this out later on, but apparently Aaron's son aspired to become an actor. When he told his mom about it, she said, First of all, in order to learn about the industry, you're going to start off by doing odd jobs at our office. And that's how he became a cleaner. I'm so sorry about my coworker. Let me help you clean this up. It's fine. It's my job, so I don't mind. But thanks to him, I was able to see how harsh society can be with my own eyes. If anything, I'm grateful. Seeing that fresh face smile, I, even as a layman, thought to myself, he's gonna make it big in showbiz one day. Later on, a meeting was held with the senior executives at the talent agency to discuss the matter. I attended myself, but Ichikawa tensed up. His face went pale, and without uttering a single word, got down on his knees. Jeez, where did his usual bluster go? Our company mainly deals with web development and online advertising contracts but the talent agency Aaron had belonged to was one of our biggest clients. We were responsible for managing the promotional videos and individual websites of their talents. Aaron was furious and did request that the contract be terminated. But in the end, the contract continued and she settled for Ichikawa being demoted. From their perspective, they probably thought terminating a contract with a long-term business partner and finding someone new would take a lot of work and include a degree of risk. Damn it! Why me? Why? You only have yourself to blame. You should just be grateful you didn't get fired. Be quiet! My dream of being at the top one day after a series of spectacular successes! You could still be in with a chance if you do some self-reflection and start over, you know. Like a one in a 10 billion chance. It seemed like Ichikawa's pride was in tatters after being demoted to a position that didn't involve interaction with customers. On top of that, after word of his misdeeds spread at his new workplace, he was picked on by his old-fashioned boss and a nasty, domineering senior manager. And I heard he ended up voluntarily resigning after a few months. Because of his reputation as a complete jerk spreading in the industry to the extent that even staff at individual offices knew his name, he was unable to find re-employment. He ended up scraping out a living as a cleaner, the very job he disparaged as being for morons, and by working part-time at a convenience store. His girlfriend dumped him, and his mom said, I have no need for a son who can't bring any money home, and kicked him out. It sounded like a real mess. It was the guy from the office who Ichikawa used to make fun of who filled me in on his situation after checking his social media. This would have never happened if he hadn't looked down on people. I'm gonna use Ichikawa as an example of how not to act and do my best to be a decent human being. <laughs>